Hey guys, welcome to Techie DIY. My name's Nigel and today's project is a USB powered LED clock kit. So this is a pretty cool kit. It uses all through hole components, so it's not that difficult to construct. The display is large with LED digits that are just over an inch or so. It has an alarm function, hourly chime and a temperature display as well. As I said, it's USB powered and a USB cable is included. I have it plugged into my office laptop and the clock turns on when I switch the laptop on, which I really like. The case is made from clear acrylic. It is optional, but I would highly recommend it because it looks really good. And you can also specify the display color from red, green, blue or white. If you want to build your own, I've put a link in the video description and also a link from the eye symbol in the top right hand corner of the screen. So before we start building, let's have a look at how the clock works. This is a simplified block diagram of the circuit showing the main parts. At the center, there is a microcontroller which communicates with all the other devices and controls the clock functions. The clock display consists of four large seven segment LEDs. There's a real time clock chip, which has a battery backup to enable it to keep the time when the power is switched off. A piezo buzzer alarm. For temperature measurement, there is a thermistor. A light dependent or photoresistor is used to dim the display after dark and push button switches for the user to set the date, time, alarm, etc. This is the full circuit diagram. The microcontroller is an STC15W404AS with an 8051 instruction set. We have the real-time clock, which is a DS1302, along with a crystal for the timing and a three volt battery for battery backup. The real-time clock communicates to the microcontroller with a three wire interface. The microcontroller initially sets the date and time on the real-time clock during the clock setup phase and then subsequently reads the correct date and time from the real-time clock whenever necessary. This is the thermistor. Its resistance is dependent on the temperature. It's configured as part of a potential divider whose output voltage represents the temperature and the microcontroller reads it with one of its analog input ports. These are two switches connected to the inputs on the microcontroller. The light dependent resistor's resistance depends on the light level. It's configured as part of a potential divider and connected to an analog port on the microcontroller. This part of the circuit is for reverse polarity protection. If you connect a power supply the wrong way round, then the diode will conduct, protecting the circuit and hopefully turning on the power supply's current limiting protection. That's the theory anyway, but it's best not to try it. This is the piezo buzzer, which is enabled by the PMP transistor when the microprocessor output pin is set low. And these are the four seven segment LED displays with current limiting resistors. Each seven segment LED display consists of seven separate LEDs that can be turned on or off to represent different characters and also an eighth LED to represent the decimal point. The seven segment LED displays used in this project are what's known as common anode devices, which means that all of the positive sides of the LEDs are connected together in common. The common anode or VDD is connected to the positive side of the power supply. To turn on a particular LED segment, the corresponding pin is connected to zero volts or ground. If it's connected to positive, then the LED segment is extinguished. In the circuit, the pins of the seven segment LED displays are connected to eight outputs on the microcontroller, and by setting the pins high or low, different characters can be displayed. With eight outputs required for each of the four displays, 32 output pins will be required on the microcontroller, which is not possible. So an approach called multiplexing is used, whereby all the corresponding pins for each of the four LED displays are connected together, and then the common anode or VDD of each display is individually switched by four separate outputs on the microcontroller. This uses a total of 12 outputs. So the way that this works is the microcontroller switches on one display at a time in a fast repetitive sequence. Each time that it enables a display, it sets the LED segment pins for the character to be displayed. The human eye's persistence of vision means that the displays appear to be on all of the time. To switch the displays, they are each connected to the collector of a PMP transistor. The power input is connected to the emitter and the base is connected to the output of the microcontroller via a resistor. When the output from the microcontroller is high, the transistor does not conduct and the display is extinguished. When the output from the microcontroller is low, the transistor does conduct and the display is enabled. Finally, it's worth mentioning that the circuit diagram shows a set of components including a relay, most of which are not included with the kit, and they don't actually do anything, so you can just ignore them. So, let's have a look at the parts. First of all, the printed circuit board. This has a silk screen showing where all of the parts are to be located. The majority of the components will be soldered on one side and the LED displays on the other. There are some 10 kilo ohm resistors, 4.7 kilo ohm resistors, 
and 330 ohm resistors. All of the resistors in the kit are labelled, but it's a good idea to check them with a multimeter set to the resistance range. There are some 22 picofarad capacitors and 0.1 microfarad capacitors. A diode, the stripe indicates the cathode or negative side, a light dependent or photoresistor, a crystal, a thermistor which looks very similar to the diode but doesn't have the stripe, sockets for the integrated circuits, an electrolytic capacitor, the striped symbol on the side indicates the negative lead and the positive lead is normally longer, some 8550 PMP transistors, a piezo buzzer, the positive side is shown on the label, a battery holder and 3 volt battery, two push button switches, a power jack, four seven segment LED displays, an SDC15W4048S microcontroller and a DS1302 real-time clock chip, a filter to increase the contrast of the LED displays, a USB cable to power the clock, and finally the parts for the case. These come with a protective covering which has to be removed before assembly. So onto the kit assembly itself. First of all I'm going to install the two 10K resistors. The component positions are shown on the PCB silk screen and also on the diagram supplied with the kit. I'm soldering the leads with a 50 watt temperature controlled iron and then cutting the leads off flush. And then eight 330 ohm resistors. Nine 4.7 kilo ohm resistors. Then we move on to the 22 picofarad capacitors. These are the ones associated with the crystal for the real time clock. O point one microfarad capacitors. Then the diode, we want the lower of the two diode positions marked on the silk screen and also to make sure the diode is oriented in the correct direction following the stripe marked on the silk screen. Then the light dependent or photoresistor, this can go in either way round. The crystal. The thermistor, this is going to fit through a cutout in the top of the case, so I'm using part of the case to set the height. And then soldering the top of the leads to hold it in position. The 8 pin IC socket, aligning the notch with the silk screen, I'm using a helping hand to hold it in place.
then the 28 pin IC socket. The electrolytic capacitor, the stripe side is negative and that goes to the shaded side on the silk screen. Now the transistors. Technically Q6 is not required as this is part of the unused relay circuit. The piezo buzzer, the positive side has the longer leg and it's also indicated on the label. The battery holder, I'm tinning the pads and the contacts first before soldering it into position. The two switches, and the power connector. Now's a good time to check the board. So I've inserted the battery and I'm checking for three volts between pins eight and four on the eight pin IC socket. And I have plugged in a USB power supply and I'm checking for five volts between pins 12 and 14 on the 28 pin IC socket. And five volts between pins one and four on the eight pin IC socket. Now I'm going to install the four LED displays once these are in place, it's going to be quite difficult to correct any soldering on the reverse side, so I've cleaned the PCB with flux cleaner and checked it over with a magnifying glass. Note that the third display is placed in upside down. Finally we can insert the DS1302 real time clock chip into the 8 pin IC holder. To make it easier I aligned the pins beforehand using a breadboard and then the microcontroller into the 28 pin socket. In both cases making sure that the notches on the ICs were aligned with the notches on the sockets. The next job is to construct the case. These are all the parts and this is how you put it together.
To reset the clock, we press the function key and the plus key together for 5 seconds. It displays 7.59. And then 5 seconds after that, it displays 8 o'clock and bleeps. And that's it, reset. To set up the clock, we press the function key. And then adjust the hours with the plus key. Press the function key again to set the clock minutes and adjust the minutes with the plus key. Repeat this process for the alarm hours, alarm minutes. Press the function key again and use the plus key to turn the alarm on and off. The starting hour for the hourly chime, the finishing hour and turn the chime on or off. Press the plus key to show the temperature and then you can modify it with the function key. Press the plus key to show the date. Press function to modify the month. Adjust the month with the plus key. Press function to modify the day. Adjust the day with the plus key. Press function to exit the date setup. Press the plus key to show the day of the week. Press the function key to modify the day of the week. Adjust the day of the week with the plus key. Press the function key to exit the day of the week setup. Press the plus key to return to the normal display. So there you go, that's the clock kit completed. I think it's a really fun little project. If you're interested, the product link is in the video description. Please leave a comment and let me know what you think. If you want to tell me where you're viewing from, I would love to know. Making these videos takes a huge amount of time and effort, so if you did like it, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you again next time. <laughs>